Does it really matter if a protagonist is active or passive? I, th I think it does. I think nobody wants to watch a passive character. And even in real life, if we, I guess there are some exceptions like leaving Las Vegas where you had a depressed alcoholic who, so that was his journey. And that's what the movie was about. And of course it was based on a very well-known book. The, but even a movie like Zelig, where I guess it's a character who's passive, who's assuming other characters' personalities that, or other individuals' personalities, assuming their identities, that he's actively doing that. But in most cases, and in a certain way, I guess you could say in Leaving Las Vegas, the uh, Nicolas Cage character was, uh, even though he's sitting on a sofa most of the time, but he was pretty committed and actively pursuing drinking himself to death and dying um, in Las Vegas. He was committed to not leaving Las Vegas, I guess. Um, but I think that otherwise it's, it's just, boring and even in the writing of a script it's best not to use passive verbs such as he is being he is he uh, you always want to keep it active like he's walking uh it's not like the sidewalks are passing him by uh but I, I feel that you always want to have an active protagonist. Sometimes you get scripts that are where they'll change, someone may change tenses. It, you, it always has to be active, present tense. Talking again about like getting too much advice to change a character, mm -hmm. even though it's sort of like your central journey and you're writing about it, do you think people layer it with other parts of another character because it's too close to home? They don't want to totally write their story, but the mm. central message or value of the film is a certain way, but because they don't really want to have it be their own biopic, really, that they pepper in these different things and it waters it down. So they make the protagonist a female when right. it's really a man's journey right. or a young man's coming of age yeah. story. No, I think that can be, and it's interesting because with the changing a protagonist from a male to female, I understand that. I mean, if you take a movie like Speed, it did work that it was a female, but you could have reversed the sexes and it could have worked. Uh, the movie that Sandra Bullock did with um, not too long ago, it was originally, I think, written as a role for George Clooney and they changed it to a female. I'm not adverse to that at all. And I've had instances where I might have, um, where I've done that. And uh, sometimes it might have uh, been, a, a white lead and you can make it an African-American character or uh, a Latin American character and that's fine and that's fresh, um, you know, to not have to. So there are times when it can be really, really great and improve the story, but it's when a person is compromising the, the essence and spirit of what they are connecting with. And it's fine to, um, I mean, I've done true stories where we couldn't use the actual characters' names, uh, so we might have changed the, their profession. So if one was a computer engineer, maybe we made him um, a real estate agent. Or if the story took place in Connecticut, we changed it to Colorado. Things like that are fine, but it's you don't you want to always have a connection with the true essence and spirit of the story. And a core, I go back to that word for me. It's a core vision of something that moves you and and compels you, and is really a strong story that you want to tell. And at the heart of it is usually a it might be an image that triggers something or usually a character with what I call a strong emotional want that I had mentioned to you, a, a writer. We talk about that I feel like I'm always learning from respected uh, colleagues and associates and there's a screenwriter who I really, really respect and he was the one who would, we can talk about motivation. I love what his phrase was that every character that you become engaged with 
especially protagonist in almost every great film, has this a character with a very strong emotional want and need. And actually, another book that I love, Stanislavski, um, an actor prepares, he gives backstory for what the actor needs to do before entering a scene. And he talks about a character having a super objective, which is the grand overriding life objective, and then the immediate objective. So maybe the big objective is, I want to be retired and live in the Bahamas. My immediate objective, I need to get this job promotion. Or, I mean, it will, just from this, you can have different genres immediately. I can tell you that the different uh, immediate objective is that he wants to um, kill um, the man he works for and get his money and steal his money. So two totally different movies with when you change what the immediate objective is and the super objective. Thinking too, when you talk about books, uh, a, an adaptation I love is White Oleander. Oh J yes, Janet Fitch. that was really good. Oh my gosh, amazing film and, and book as well. Um, if you were to change Alison Lohman's character to a male, it seems like then you would have to change all of the foster parents to men as well because mm -hmm. it was a it was a, a relationship between the mother and daughter and, right. and how toxic that was and it does create different dynamics. I think also because that was based on source material, a really well respected book uh, and a bestseller, that you wouldn't change it. Um, and there probably wouldn't, and if it wasn't based on a best-selling book, you could go other way, but they're two different stories. And I think, again, I, whoever, if it was the screenwriter or the author, what is truest to what's getting you going? What is inspiring you? Is it, you know, dynamics between a mother and daughter are different than between a father and son. Um, so I think it's really connecting, as a writer, when I say core vision, another, uh, way to describe it is the source of inspiration, the thing that gets you really excited about the story. What is the journey you want to tell? Right, and to for the motivation of all those mothers, whether it was Michelle Pfeiffer's character, mm -hmm. and then all of the you know Renee Zellweger had her own um, you know motivation, mm -hmm. and 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 Robin right. Wright's character. It was so they all had these interesting mm -hmm. motivations. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah, and that's, I think, what's important for screenwriters to really, I think we can never take for granted not knowing our characters well enough. Now, if it's purely an action film like a speed, it's not so important to, the ride is the movie, um, the, or the mummy, the original one. The, uh, it's, there are motivations clearly and a strong plot, uh, but it's really less about deep character development. But anytime you're doing, if it's, generally speaking, if it's a psychological thriller, uh, family drama, comedy, you need to uh, not take for granted that you can't know your characters. And a, a lot of writers don't go through that step of really knowing them and immersing themselves in that character or characters. I mean, and it comes up with like, who are they? What, you know, where are they when the, the movie starts? Are they in a happy place? Are they in a sad place? Did they just break up with a boyfriend? Are they on top of the world? Did they just get fired? Um, the, so uh, knowing those kinds of things, and I apply what Stanislavski said, which is what is their super objective? What do they want in life? So to go through all of those things, is there, a, even if it's not in the script, is there a pivotal thing that happened that damaged them? Uh, so those types of things, I usually give uh, clients I'm working with a character questionnaire to help um, unleash all those things about their character. Uh, so. Because you can't really write from an abstract place, just, oh, he's a guy. Right, um, right. I like that, the questionnaire. Okay. That's great.